Hey everyone, I'm starting this YouTube channel for friends and family so I can update you all on my journey in Australia. I thought the best way to start would be to share my 28 hour flying journey and first 24 hours in Sydney. I'll be documenting all my adventures over the next year, so follow along to see what it's like to move from the US to Australia on a working holiday visa. So I naturally woke up at 3 a.m. the morning of my 3 p.m. flight because I was so excited and anxious. I finally got out of bed at 5 a.m. Here I am very tired. Since I had plenty of time, I decided to do my nails and hang out with my cat who was pissed at me for leaving. My mom drove me to the airport around noon and it was very emotional. I was so anxious and panicking a bit and then we had a very bittersweet goodbye. First, I had a one hour flight to Toronto, then one of two layovers. There's Tim Hortons, hi Canada. I first checked to make sure that my gate did exist and then I walked to get Starbucks. So I ordered a black tea with lemonade and stretched a bit and stared at some people in the airport. Flight number two was to Vancouver. This was about a five hour flight. Even though it was a huge plane with 10 seats across each row, my personal bag didn't fit under the seat. Luckily, no one sat right next to me, so I got to shove it under their seat. Then I had anxiety for about an hour about if it would all fit on the next flight. I arrived at the Vancouver airport at around 6 p.m. while I was buying a tuna salad sandwich in the airport, which my friend Lyric was extremely concerned about. I overheard a tall, tatted Aussie man asking the cashier where the nearest bar was. So good vibes all around. I washed my armpits and teeth in the bathroom sink along with a handful of other women, then bought snacks for the last leg of the trip, a 15 hour flight to Sydney. I had never been on a flight that long before, but it didn't turn out as bad as I thought. I just slept most of the time, watched movies, and I only had to go to the bathroom once. One thing New York City taught me was how to not have to pee in public, so that came in handy. I did panic when I saw the plane route going over water for at least 14 hours. Um, the distance really came into perspective when I saw Hawaii was about a third of the way there. So there was a lot of panicking going on this day. I'm not really sure when my dream of going to Australia started. It probably came from watching Finding Nemo when I was younger, but I've wanted to go most of my life. So when I realized how close I was to finally landing in Australia, it was like a feeling of, okay, this is actually happening. The entire travel journey felt like it was happening to somebody else, kind of, like it wasn't happening to me. I loved watching the views of the nature and then the city as we got closer to landing. Finally, I made it to the Sydney airport. A local woman proceeded to tell me that it was very Australian to not tell anyone what was going on. I also had an exchange with a woman about how we both regretted going on the right line instead of the left to declare our luggage. She said someone once told her to always go left because people tend to go right since it's clockwise, which kind of foreshadowed what I encountered after getting a SIM card for my phone. My first moment of culture shock was realizing the cab driver's seat was on the right side of the car and that we were driving on the left side of the road. Side note, I don't think the cab driver liked me that much. He kind of wanted nothing to do with me. Anyway, it was even more shocking to find out that people also walk on the left side of the sidewalk and that escalators are on the left side as well. It took me a few times of running into people and them giggling as I moved out of the way to figure this out. And then I tried to walk up a down escalator, but at least I know what side of the road to catch the bus on now. After I dropped my 70 to 100 pounds of luggage off at my hostel, I stopped into a coffee shop. I didn't want to order an embarrassing American drink, so when the barista said there was no menu, I ordered a flat white because someone told me once that Australians drink those. Then I walked around the neighborhood to take in the scenery and figured out how to use my phone to talk to my dad for a little bit. It was about 8.30 p.m. on the previous day where he was, and around 10.30 a.m. where I was. I had a simulation moment of questioning how I just hopped on a plane and now I was walking around on the other side of the world, but maybe that was also the jet lag. Right away, I felt like I fit in and enjoyed being in the environment. All my first impressions of Australia were better than I expected them to be, especially how fresh the air is. It kind of reminds me of a mix of different places I've been, but also so unique. And it feels like there's a coffee shop about every five feet. These are the type of birds walking around on the street, and I'm actually obsessed with them. I couldn't check into my room until around 1.30 p.m., and at this point it was still like 11, so I kept walking around and felt like people were looking at me because I was in my pajamas and desperately needed to shower. The hostel did give me free lunch at noon, and this was the Indian food they served that day. It was so good. I asked the cook for a napkin, and she didn't understand what I meant. I later found out from Google that in Australia, a napkin is a menstrual pad. At this point, I felt like I was falling asleep sitting up and finally got to go to bed at 1.30. I was so confused why they didn't give me a blanket, and then I realized that my head was actually laying on the blanket, and I just thought it was a really huge pillow. I think the excitement and jet lag made it hard for me to fall asleep right away, but I finally passed out around 4 p.m., then woke up to await the arrival of my travel buddy, Kat. Her bed is over there, so we can wave to each other. And here she is. She did arrive with a broken shoe. 
we showered then went to bed at about 9 p.m i think and i woke up around 4 a.m i was obsessed with the sound of the birds i could hear from bed when i got up then i did some stretches to try to recover from all the traveling here i am looking absolutely insane and wretched my hair hasn't been this curly since middle school these are the stretches my PT taught me for my arthritis that everyone in my immediate family and close friends and roommates have already seen. We left around 7 a.m. to get coffee and do some work on our laptop. Say hi. I can't remember the last time I like left to do work that early outside. It was pretty cold, about 50 to 60 degrees and rainy, so we had some heavier clothes on here, but we were just excited to bop around. I think I was really surprised at how cold it was. I knew they were just coming off of winter, but I didn't think it was going to be very cold. We found a coffee shop with Wi-Fi and look at these adorable children's drawings. We loved how they spelled out the pronunciation of an Australian accent. Then we ate a delicious breakfast, just didn't want to cook in the hostel. Here we are begging people to let us live with them because we need a home and hate our hostel. Um, that's all for the first 24 hours in Sydney and I will be back for more updates soon. Bye!